What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Minus Forum UN305. Now this is one of their most affordable mini PCs that they've released, and along with this they also released a lower end model known as the UN100, making both of these mini PCs some of their lowest cost units to date. But, like I mentioned, we've got the UN305 here, and this is really interesting given the price, form factor, and what kind of performance this thing's putting out. This has the brand new i3 N305, and on paper it might not sound like much, but it's definitely a big upgrade from the older Celeron CPUs with 4 cores and no extra threads, because with this we actually get 8 cores up to 3.8 GHz paired up with a 32 execution unit Intel UHD iGPU. And by the way, this little mini PC utilizes DDR5 RAM. We've got 16 gigs running at 4,800 mega transfers here. And inside of the box, obviously, you'll get the PC. Also comes with a VESA bracket and some mounting hardware for 2.5 inch drive internally, a 12 volt, 30 watt power supply, and an HDMI cable. Taking a look at I.O., up front here we've got two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and USB Type-C, which is a full-function USB Type-C port, so we can do video out. Not much going on around this side, but we do have a micro SD card slot and a 3.5mm audio jack on the left-hand side. And moving around back, we have two more USB 3.2 ports, but these are Gen 1, dual gigabit Ethernet, two full-size HDMI ports, and power in. So in total, we can actually do three displays out, utilizing that USB Type-C up front and both of these HDMI ports around the back. But before we go any further, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Ridge. I know that Ridge is really known for their wallets, but recently they launched their Ring line, and these are absolutely amazing. They're made with premium materials, including carbon fiber, tungsten, carbide, 24 karat gold, and titanium. The one I have here is the burnt titanium version, and they also come with these nice little cases. But each one also comes with a dual band silicone ring, and this is just in case you want to be a little more comfortable, or you know you're going to be in a situation where it's a higher probability of losing a ring. But luckily, with the purchase of one of these rings, Ridge offers lost and resizing protection. Whether you lose the ring or lose 20 pounds and you need to resize for a smaller ring, they come with the option of two future exchanges for the same ring in the same size or a different size. So this is pretty cool. I mean, with the lifetime of this ring, you can have it exchanged up to two times. So that's definitely got a lot going for it there. And these were released just in time for Father's Day. So if you're looking for an awesome gift, you can head over to ridge.com forward slash ETA prime. You can save up to 40% through June 15th. Remember, that's ridge.com forward slash ETA prime. I was really interested to take a look at the internals here because it does support a 2.5 inch drive, but we do have to remove this full main board. It goes in the top of the case. It's actually really easy to get to, but uh, when it comes to RAM, it's soldered to the board here. So you got to opt for either 8 or 16 right out of the box. You can't upgrade it down the road. But right up top, we've got a connector and enough room for a 2.5 inch SSD. So with the Minus Forum UM305 for the CPU, we've got the all new Intel Core i3 N305. 8 cores, 8 threads, up to 3.8 gigahertz. We also have built-in Intel UHD graphics with 32 execution units, and this will run it up to 1.25 gigahertz. This unit has 16 gigabytes of DDR5 at 4,800 megatransfers per second. It supports one 2280 M.2 SSD and one 2.5 inch drive. You can do a mechanical if you want to, but I would highly suggest using an SSD. This has Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 4.2, and it's running Windows 11. Okay, so I've had this little system up and running for a little while. Got everything updated. We're on Windows 11 here. And uh, as you can see, we've got that new i3 N305 with those eight cores, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 at 4,800, and the built-in Intel iGPU. We've got 32 execution units here. Really snappy little system here. Remember, we've got Wi-Fi 5 with this, and... Uh, kind of wish we did have Wi-Fi 6, but it's still pretty good. Now, I personally like using Ethernet. But uh, heading over here, we can check this out. Like I mentioned, they've got the UN100 and the UN305. All the information you really need to know is over here. I'll leave a link in the description. But, you know, just doing web browsing, email checking, uh, document editing, light photo editing. We've got enough power with the N305. I was actually really surprised by this little chip, and I have tested it in the past on another PC. But with this, we actually get a little more out of it because the TDP is a bit higher. A lot of the newer mini PCs that utilize this chip are set at a 15 watt TDP. And if I just run a quick stress test here with CPU-Z, 
you can see just on the CPU jumps up to 21, 22 watts. And remember, that's only on the CPU. This actually has a total TDP of 30 because remember, we also have that iGPU we need to worry about. So if we stress that out, it'll jump up to 29, 30 watts. And we've got a boost on all eight cores up to three gigahertz, 3.8 on one. And I think the rest do 3.3, 3.4 and 3.5. But for overall everyday use, really not too shabby. The next thing I wanted to take a look at was some 4K video playback from YouTube. So I'm going to use one of my favorite videos here. And uh, this thing does a really great job with 4K. This new i3 N305 can definitely handle it. And I've actually tested up to two monitors, 4K 60 on each, with no drop frames. I think this would turn out to be a great little media device. And the fact that we do have room for that 2.5 inch drive is uh, pretty cool because we can store our own media there. Or if you wanted to use it like a Plex server, it would definitely work really well. The next thing I wanted to show off were a few benchmarks that I ran. And uh, first one here is Geekbench 6 single core 1244 multi 4887. So when you compare this to the older N series like the N4105 or even the N5105, we're way ahead on single and multi with this given that we have those extra cores and higher clocks. Taking a look at some GPU benchmarks with 3 d Mark, we've got Night Raid here with a total score of 8514. Not super impressive, but you got to keep in mind, we've only got 32 execution units. And the final one here is Wildlife, a Vulcan benchmark, 5,288. So I test out a lot of mini PCs on this channel, and just taking a look at these synthetic scores, I can tell you that this will handle older games. So I want to move over there and test out some gaming. And first up, we've got World of Warcraft. Now, I personally don't play this game, but I do like to test it every once in a while. I know there's people out there that want a cheap machine that can run something like this. And we're at medium settings. Well, one notch under the slider, told you I really don't play it much, 1080p, and we can get an average of 89 FPS with this game. I know it's not super hard to run, but it's still great to see that this cheap PC can play a game like this. I wanted to test out Overwatch 2 because it's a very well optimized game, and unfortunately we do dip under 60 at 720p low. Initially going into just kind of the staging area, I was really impressed we were around 80 FPS, but as you can see when we're in battle, lots of stuff is going on, we do get those dips. And of course, Skyrim, 1080p low, and I do think we could do medium with this. I just went into it at low. We're at 60 FPS, and we're really not stressing out that CPU or the GPU all the way. So realistically, older PC games, easier to run PC games, indie games, and 2D games are going to run flawlessly on this little machine. But don't expect to run Cyberpunk 2077. You could always stream it if you wanted to, but you know, I always like running natively. We also had to test out some emulation, and I had a good feeling that this little chip was going to do a pretty decent job. Here's GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. We've got Automotalista, 1080p using the Vulcan back in. This is one of those games that does struggle on lower end chips, but it's pushing right through, giving us a constant 60. Even around these corners up here, this is where it usually lags out on low end systems. PlayStation 2 is another one I wanted to test. We've got PCSX2, 720p, DirectX 11 back in. I tried Vulcan, but with some of the games, it still gives us some issues because we are on the experimental version of this emulator. But with DirectX 11, even the harder to emulate games can run at 720p. Something like Gran Turismo 4 will run at 1080, but when you move over to Ratchet and Clank or God of War 2, you will have to take it down to 720p. And finally, we've got some PlayStation 3 emulation. I thought this was pretty impressive, but keep in mind it's not going to run every PlayStation 3 game at full speed. As we know, there are some out there that are just really hard to emulate. But seeing the uh, N305 running this Tekken game at full speed using RPCS3, 720p Vulcan is pretty promising. I actually thought we'd have a lot of trouble with PlayStation 3 emulation on this chip. Another big concern to some people is energy cost, so I always like to test out total system power consumption from the wall. So while I'm doing my testing, this is plugged into a kilowatt meter. At idle, only pulls 7 watts. 
average gaming 26 and the maximum that I could get this to draw was 33 watts and that's really an extreme task. Most of the time you're going to be sitting right there around 15 watts. With 4k video playback it's actually right there at 12 so I mean it's a very low power consumption mini PC. We've got decent CPU performance, okay GPU performance. I mean we're not looking at a gaming PC right here and of course if you want something that's a little more expensive I would go with an AMD Ryzen. 5,000, 6,000, or now we've got 7,000 series mini PCs coming to the market. But, you know, if you're looking for a low-cost solution for everyday web browsing, email checking, 4K video playback, then the Menace Forum UN305 might be for you. Since we've got such low power consumption here, it doesn't get loud. It is an actively cooled CPU, so we do have a fan in here. So through all of my testing, it was a pretty quiet experience also. But uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. We will be seeing more of these mini PCs with the i3 N305 from different manufacturers, but you really got to keep an eye out for that TDP. Since we can go up to 30 with this, this is about the max performance you're going to get out of the N305 right now. So if you're interested in learning more, maybe pick one of these up. I will leave some links to Menace Forum's website in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, like more games, more emulators, or even a different operating system, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.